Hi everyone, I'm Paul, and in today's video, I'm going to be applying ICT's concepts to assess the daily bias in Bitcoin. I've been tracking ICT's 2022 mentorship program on my channel, so if you'd like to learn more, make sure you check out those videos. But be sure to go directly to the source and check out ICT's 2022 YouTube mentorship program on his channel. I've put a link in the description to save you a little bit of time. So please like, subscribe, and let's jump into today's video. So if we start with our weekly chart, you can see it's been a pretty tough six months in the market for Bitcoin. So pretty much from where we are at the moment to the all-time highs, which was towards the end of last year, you know, the market's already lost 63%. You know, a lot of participants are talking about going even maybe down to about 80% or 85%, which is what's typically happened when Bitcoin's had, you know, big pullbacks in the past. And you can see that would take us all the way down to sort of 14,000. The other thing that's worth mentioning is that we're on the back of seven straight weeks of down closed candles in Bitcoin, which is a record. It's not a great record, but it's a record nonetheless. So you can see from that mid-March period when we made a higher high, the market's just pretty much traded down the whole time since. And you can see we had this big capitulation candle on the back of that lunar and UST collapse, and we traded right down to 25,000 here. So market's looking pretty bearish. So switching over to our daily chart now, I think it's worth going back towards the end of 2021 and looking at that high and then just tracking the you know, price action after that. So if we zoom into the all-time highs just here at 69,000, you can see immediately after the highs were set, we had these two short-term lows and then a fair value gap was formed here. And you can see that the fair value gap, so that's our three candle structure, so one, two, three, and the fair value gaps form between the low of that first candle and the high of the third candle. And so this second candle here, the one where the fair value gaps formed, has broken these short-term lows here, you know, breaking market structure. So this is our first signal that the market has gone bearish and that we have now a bearish bias. And so given we're on the daily chart, we're expecting lower prices until we get confirmation otherwise. So as we move forward, you can see that the market continues to break these previous lows. So there's a low here, the market trades below that, and you can see another fair value gap is formed here. The market trades back into that and then trades down before we have this really big capitulation candle here. And you can see that takes out all of these imbalances that we had on these uh, bullish fair value gaps on the way up to the all time high. So this candle cleans all of those imbalances out. And even though we have this big whip back here, we really don't have any indication that necessarily the bias has changed. We still have bearish bias because effectively we haven't had any price action that tells us otherwise. So we go through a short period of consolidation here and we do have some bullish fair value gaps start to form. But you can see we just never get past this short term high here and the market immediately starts to trade down again. So we have another fair value gap formed here. So you can see this powerful candle which takes out this short term low here. We have a break in market structure the market trades back into that fair value gap. And so our bearish bias remains and we're expecting the market to continue to trade lower. We can see immediately after that again, we have another fair value gap form. So after we trade back up into that fair value gap, we have this one final powerful move downwards, this big bearish candle here, which takes out all of the remaining buy side liquidity at these previous lows and then at these previous lows here. And so the market continues to trade lower right down to this, you know, $32,000 mark, taking out all of the imbalances here uh, as it does so. So after this bearish phase, we had this period of consolidation. And you can see that the market had these little starts at trying to go higher. So we had this bearish fair value gap form here. So our one, two, three candle formation, breaking market structure. And you can see we actually make a higher high here, but the market fails to follow through. So the market falls through, comes right through where our stop would have been if we'd gone long at that position, takes out all of these previous lows down here. We then have another bullish fair value gap form. So our one, two, three candle formation here. So you can see we break market structure here. We don't quite uh, eclipse the previous high, but we trade back down into that zone. We don't take out that stop. And you can see the market then trades higher comes just up into this previous bearish fair value gap up here. But again, it can't continue the movement. 
And then that takes us pretty much to the most recent move that we've had. So the bearish bias basically remained in play even after we had this consolidation phase and after we failed to continue here, the market breaks down again, very similar to what we had up here at the all time highs at 69,000. We have a bearish fair value gap form here. So you can see our three candle formation and we take out this short term low here. So we break market structure here and our bearish bias basically comes back into play at this point. You can see we have another bearish fair value gap form here and another one all the way to the present day. And you can see we take out all of this buy side liquidity on the way down. And if you zoom in, you can see that we have this acceleration as we come to the downside here, taking all that buy side liquidity out. And this candle here, so you can see this hammer candle basically drops right down into a very old uh, bullish fair value gap. And you can see that one candle comes down and, and fills out most of the imbalance right back here all the way at the end of or Christmas day in 2020. So we've just had seven weeks of continuous down close candles. We've had this big acceleration on our daily chart right down into, you know, very historic bullish fair value gap. We've taken out all this buy side liquidity on the way down. And so with this candle formation, you'd expect that we're going to have some kind of bounce. And if we basically take a dip from the high to the low in this particular move, you can see that imbalance that we have there is pretty much at that 50% mark. And so you'd expect that we're going to have some kind of retracement out of this discount zone back into a premium zone. And if I look at this, I'd expect that we're probably going to have price draw towards either this fair value gap and potentially even this fair value gap up here. So one of the things ICT teaches is looking at correlated assets. And so one of the assets that's really highly correlated to Bitcoin is the NASDAQ. And that's obviously what we've been using throughout all of ICT's YouTube mentorship program. And if we look at the NASDAQ, again, this is on the daily chart, we can see kind of a similar formation, I guess, to what we saw in Bitcoin. So we have this big move downwards. And as that move has occurred, this bearish move downwards, we've taken out a number Number of these previous lows, all this buy side liquidity on the way down. Now, the interesting thing that's happened on the NASDAQ, if we just zoom in a little bit more here, you can see we had that same sort of bottoming formation that we had on Bitcoin. But the difference here is we've actually had a fair value gap form on the daily chart in the NASDAQ. The other thing that's interesting is we have these two highs here on these two previous candles. And you'll remember from lots of ICT's teachings is he talks about when you have these relatively equal highs is you should treat them as suspect and you would expect that price is going to retest those and probably go through those levels. So the NASDAQ's also suggesting that we've you know, potentially reached a, a temporary bottom and we're going to see some kind of bounce back. We have a fair value gap, which is bullish. We have these relative equal highs, which are suspect. We'd expect price to push through those again. And we also have another fair value gap here, which we'd expect to be a draw on price. So if we look at the NASDAQ as a correlated asset to Bitcoin, it's suggesting that we might see higher prices in the short term as well. And again, if we run our FIB from the range high to the range low in this move. Again, at our 50% level, we have that fair value gap there as well. And so the next question would be, is if we are expecting high prices, how could we potentially take advantage of that in the current market? So I've just zoomed into the four hour chart. So one of the things that I've picked up in some of the recent ICT lessons is using, I guess, fair value gaps stacked on each other. And what you can see is we actually have a fair value gap that's formed here on the four hour chart. So if I just quickly mark that out, so you can see this bottoming formation that we talked about on the daily chart. And then our fair value gap forms here. So this is our three candle formation here. So the fair value gap is between the high of the first candle and the low of that third candle. And you can see we have these previous short term highs here and this break in market structure which occurs. And you can see after the fair value gaps formed, the market's traded in and about this range. So interestingly, at where this buy side liquidity was here. So we've traded in and around this zone. And then the question would be is where would our targets be if we're looking to take a trade from this point? Well, our first targets would most likely be this fair value gap up here. And this would be going into that premium zone. So we've already marked out that range. So we're trying to buy here in this discount and trade back up into the premium zone. And so our first target most likely would be somewhere above these previous highs in this fair value gap. And then looking at potentially a second target here 
closer to the range highs in the fair value gap here, either on this four hour chart or the one that we marked out on the daily chart. And so if we were gonna take that trade, then we'd have our limit either at the low of that third candle, or we'd be looking to enter at some point in that fair value gap. And we'd either put our stop here at the low of that first candle, or you could potentially put it down here at this sort of range low that we painted later. And that would just depend on how long I guess you were looking to stay in the trade and how much risk you were willing to put onto it. And so if we took this trade here, we're looking to get out inside that fair value gap, you're looking at about a one and a half hour return. But if we were looking to hold up into that second fair value gap, you're looking at over a three hour return. In today's video, we applied ICT's concepts to assess the bias in Bitcoin and how we could potentially position ourselves to take advantage of that view. I hope you found this video helpful and please let me know in the comments how you use ICT's concepts to assess bias in your trading. If you enjoyed this video, it'd be great if you could like it. That helps other people to find it. And if you'd like to see more videos like this one, please make sure you subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.